give the developers credit here. Because even though replaying this game kind of exposes part as being kind of boring, you know, an open world game that I'm being guided around at the beginning, just let me play the damn game, it does kind of show the world off pretty well. I mean, the beautiful sun shafts and the, the god rays, the long draw distance, all so, of that. a griffin this close to the village? Strange. My thoughts exactly. From the forest to the mountain shore, but here? Near the main road. Maybe it's the war. Corpses everywhere, the stench of blood, burnt flesh. Drives monsters crazy sometimes. Men, too. We need to watch ourselves in White Orchard. Then we should leave as soon as we learn it. Shit in a place. Spent a lot of time going in and out of villages, picking up jobs and all that. coat of arms, the Temerian lilies. They've a right to hang there. This ain't Temeria no more, old man. It's Nilfgaard now. My arse it is. Those freaks. Beg your pardon for those thugs. No need. We're used to it. Folk are jumpy around here. Armies just passed through. Now a griffin's prowling about. Mm -hmm. Already had the pleasure. One mean beast. Mean? Light way for a hunter to put it. Clawed Lena so bad, poor thing's one foot in the grave. But there's no good to wallow in misfortune. How can I be a service? With a drop of vodka for me. And you? Something to wet your tongue? Of course, we're looking for Yennefer, and we have to ask the questions about her in these sections. Pretty busy place you got. Nations on the move. Some search for kin, others just want to get out of the way of the armies. They all need food, drink, and a night's rest in warmth. So, war's been good for your trade? Aye, so far. But it'd be best to know peace again. Times like these, you never know what tomorrow will bring. There a contract on that griffin? Nay, not at the moment. Used to be. As soon as a beast had built a nest nearby, the alderman would start a collection, or go to the lord for help. Now, the Aldermen don't use the privy without asking the Black One's permission first. And, seems they hanged the Lord. So no contract. Shame. We might have done something, but not for free. Looking for a woman. Raven-haired, violet eyes, dresses in black and white, riding in from Willoughby. And, uh, strange as it sounds, lilac and gooseberries might have smelled that. I've not seen nor smelt such a lady. I believe I'd remember. Yeah, especially hard to forget this one. Plenty of travellers about, though. Folk from all over. Might be worth your while to ask after her. Thanks. For everything. We're given enough context to understand why we're searching for Yennefer, but we're not really given a lot of context as to why she is running, or much context as to who she is. I guess if you were fans of the series, you would know, but I'm not really, so... Help you bandage that up? Please. I'm not decrepit yet. Then I'll ask about Yennefer. Mm-hmm. Just remember, we'd rather not draw any attention. Black one's been out measuring the fields. Let him measure. 
Better that then. I'm looking for someone. And we seek some peace and quiet. Out of my face, freak. For your breath sours my beer. Red woman dressed in black and white. Seen her? Talk. Folks say the lady rode through the village a few days back. Galloping so fast she knocked Radabor into a ditch. Which way did she go? Dunno. Lots of tracks leading off the main road. Could have gone anywhere. Oi, people! The freak's taken Micah's mind! Uh-huh. And I'll take your tongue if you don't shut up. Damn. Carol don't fuck around. It does seem kind of screwed up going around and bullying these people, even though they are kind of bigoted against witchers. I guess we'll get into later on what the hell a witcher is. Not quite human, but still human enough that really shouldn't be big, big of a difference. But Geralt's kind of an ass. I guess really depend on what your choices are. What a waste of time. The earth shall revolve around the sun before you comprehend these rules. Got a minute? Why not? Aldert Git, Assistant Professor in Contemporary History at Oxenfurt Academy. Geralt of Rivia. Witcher, with tenure. I'm looking for a woman. Long hair, dressed in black and white. Seen anyone like that? Of course not! Unlike the populace, I know the horsewoman of war is pure poppycock. Not a place I'd ever expect to find a scholar. Take it you're fleeing the war? Quite the opposite. Chasing it. I'm headed for the front. Tired of life? I seek knowledge, which I value more than life itself. I've a thirst no dusty old tomes can quench. I wish to see the Nilfgaardian invasion with my own eyes, understand it, and record it all in my chronicle, my magnum opus. Interesting. We need somebody to describe war. What it's really like. Not colorful banners and generals making moving speeches, but rape, violence, and thoughtless cruelty. Ah, I see you lack the polish of the Academy. Rape and cruelty are details of no import to the war's course. Trinkets on the garment of conflict, one might say. Hmm. Tell that to the people whose houses burned down. War reached Novigrad yet? Nope. But it's only a matter of time. Nilfgaard on one bank, Redania on the other. Drooling over the city like dogs over a juicy bone. Many a ruler's choked on that bone. True. We value our liberty in Novigrad, and we know how to fight for it. Mm -hmm. The scholars especially. The sword is not the only weapon. Do not forget, architects from our academy designed the city walls. Walls no war machine has ever crumbled. Horsewoman of war? What's that about? Folks say an omen. A beautiful phantom rides the fields at night, looks as you described her, armies follow her, and all who cross her path meet with misfortune. I can vouch for the last bit. Know where they saw her? No, facts interest me, not fairy tales. Gotta go. So long. A moment, Witcher. You strike me as a man of the world. Are you familiar with Gwent? No, and I don't have time to learn. But the rules are quite simple. Come, let's play. Hmm. Why not? Splendid! Here's how it's done. Hmm. Well, it's not a game for everyone. It requires an analytical mind. If you ever find yourself in Oxenfurt and wish to play a true master, ask for Stepan. A simple innkeep by trade, but a true maestro when it comes to Gwent. I'll remember that. Thanks. I didn't play a lot of Gwent while playing the game the first time. And to be honest, I'm not sure why I lost that last game. I had a higher score, but, uh, whatever. Looking for a woman. Uh, like everyone. Not like everyone. And not just any woman. Mine smells of lilac and gooseberries, dresses in black and white. Two schnapsies. <laughs> It'll lift your spirits. Fine, I'll have a drink. Can we cut to the chase? You seen her or not? Yennefer of Wengelberg. Uh. 
never mentioned her name. Yet you described her perfectly. And once I hear something, I never forget. Can't help it. How do you know Yennefer? What a question. Master Dandelion's ballads, of course. The only way a humble merchant might hope to rub up against greatness. Unless, that is, he's as lucky as I am. And runs into a very patient witcher. It's a Geralt of Rivia himself. The Butcher of Blaviken. Recognize me from Master Dandelion's ballads, too? To your health. What do you do? Who are you? A mangy vagrant. Gaunt to road demon, at your service. Vagrant? That a profession now? Uh, once a merchant of mirrors. The madding crowd dubbed me Master Mirror, or the Man of Glass. You seen Yennefer? Deepest apologies, but I must ask. Is this about love? Guessed it. It's love. I knew it at once. What do you know? Tell me. Before you appeared, it never occurred to me that might have been Yennefer. Who would have thought? Get to the point. An elf guardian scout from the local garrison saw her. Where? At their camp. She rode in there. Dark of night. Black and white. Gooseberries and... Yes, I know. Had a terse exchange with the garrison commander and raced off. Where to? <laughs> I'm not omniscient. Ask at the garrison. Thanks. We men of the road must stick together. Perhaps one day I'll be in trouble and you'll be nearby to help. It was Anton Chekhov that said something along the lines of, if you see a gun in the first act, it had better go off in the third. Now the whole concept behind that is you don't want to lie to your audience. Don't build something up and then not have the payoff. I believe that can also be interpreted to mean something along the lines of, if you're going to have something occur later, build up to it. Don't just surprise your audience. Now, that's something I wish the writers of the Game of Thrones series on HBO would understand. Because as smart as those guys thought they were, doing a lot of things just for the sake of surprising their audience, it didn't really work out that well, and they didn't build up to it properly. Now, the character of Gunter Odim, or Master Mirror, is done quite well here, although, to be honest, I did kind of forget about his character by the time he reappeared later on in the story. But that's probably more my fault, considering I had played the game at the beginning here, and then stopped playing the game, and then picked it back up again maybe about two years later. So, by the time his character came back in the prominence in the story, I didn't remember seeing him earlier. But, seeing him in this context, and then seeing him as he would appear later on in the game, is definitely the gun going off in the third act. Done drinking. Mm -hmm. Then fuck off. <laughs> Don't want your kind here. Better round up someone else to help. Three of you don't stand a chance against me. Well, I could fuck you up by myself. If I had a bag over my head and my hands tied behind... Actually, no, not even then. Chet, Lesh, back off. I'll teach this vagrant a lesson. Man on freak. These guys definitely started this fight. But I get the feeling that this interpretation of Geralt is kind of a dick. He definitely didn't need to get into this fight. He could have either talked his way out of it or used his little magic signs in order to uh, dissuade these guys from fighting. Don't punch my horse, you asshole. <laughs> and clearly, the other people around here didn't want anything to do with this. The, the, the uh, bard maid was clearly <laughs> didn't want to see this happen. And I'm going to beat the piss out of these three guys. Because they're assholes. Eh, well, at least they're not dead. Alright, so here we go. Finally. 
we get our first opportunity, as soon as I can find Roach, first opportunity to really hop on and explore the world proper. Now, this environment feels kind of big at first. It's not, not quite huge, but it's sizable. And we get a chance to move around here. Now, we're going to go into two other areas in the main game, and then one more in one of the expansion packs that are much larger. But this does give you kind of a feeling of what the game is going to end up being. We're being directed in a direction, but we didn't really have to go there. We could explore if we wanted. And in fact, I'm going to just sort of wander around in the direction where I need to go. But I'm going to pick up a quest on the way. Just in case you couldn't tell by the weird slowdown that happened earlier, I am recording this commentary post-playthrough. I think it's kind of necessary if I want to go and edit out all the slow parts... And I want to have more composed thoughts about what I'm going to say, and not worry too much about having to actually play the game well, while thinking of things to say. Now you have these different, uh, I don't know, points of power, or whatever the hell they're called. You sort of meditate or something by them, and it increases one of your sign intensities, making your magic more powerful for a short period of time. There's a cooldown you can see in the top left. And it also... Um, it also goes and and gives you one ability point for your skill level ups. Oh, there are enemies here. And I'm not playing too well in the beginning here. The control scheme does take a little bit of getting used to, and it's been some time since I played this game. So, I'm um, out of practice. What happened? Monsters! Monsters from the swamp! Folks said the road was fraught with peril, but I wouldn't listen. Got my comeuppance now. Less moaning, more details. What happened, and how can I help? And remember, I don't work for free. Witcher's code and all. Well, was on my way to the Black Ones to trade. Suddenly my horse got spooked, ran clear off the road. We hit a bump, I went flying and the horse and cart rolled on. Then I heard bubbling, neighing, slurping. Something came out from the muck, devoured Asher, hooves and all. No doubt my goods are still on the cart, but I'm too afraid to go and see. Thought maybe you... I'm most concerned about a little box. Bring it to me. I beg you. Fine, I'll go. Let you know if I find that box. There will be a lot of this kind of thing, where you pick up small quests and then go and do it. Now, the quality of quests are pretty good, and it's this kind of thing that really gives the game its feeling of life. Because The Witcher 3 is not quite the same kind of open-world game when you think about, say, the modern Fallout games or the modern Elder Scrolls games. Those games go for a feeling of, of life in a real world by... I, what the hell is it called? The um, creation engine is the name of their, their game engine. There's some aspect of their technology that allows the world to continue to exist even if you're not present for it. So characters, even when you're not there to see it, go about their duties. They'll eat, they'll sleep, they'll converse, they'll hunt or perform tasks or something like that. Even when you're not there to see it. So it kind of has this effect of, of you stumbling across actions. And it doesn't feel like it's scripted based on your arrival. And also, you might stumble across things out in the field, like characters walking from place to place, or fights going on, or all that kind of stuff. The Witcher 3 doesn't have any of that, and that will become painfully apparent as you reload and fast travel into certain areas, and you see the exact same enemies in the exact same positions, and you have the exact NPCs always standing next to that signpost, or having the same exact conversation over and over again. Witcher just God. didn't go for that kind of thing. What they did do was litter the world full of side quests and little characters 
with or insignificant characters with minor little details about them that give you the feeling or the impression, the mistaken impression, but still the impression that these people are all deep characters, they have their own motivations and all that kind of stuff. When writing fiction, something you're going to want to do is to make your side characters feel more significant than they are. And we're going to have a lot of instances where we run across characters who have no significance in the story. And if you hang around them and see what they do or pull out all the information out of them, they're not going to be that interesting. But at first glance, and that's usually all you're going to end up getting is a first glance, they seem like they're deep characters in their own right. And that's what we have here. We have a character here who has just enough of a motivation and just enough of a backstory tied to a quest to give the impression that this is a real character, that this is more of a real person, that if you wandered away from Geralt and wandered off with this person, you'd experience a whole different interesting story. Now, of course, this character doesn't have all of that, not in real life. The writers simply aren't going to spend that much time crafting stories for insignificant characters. But it's it's more the thought that counts. <laughs> okay, so what this guy wants is us to go into the swamp and find his cart. He said it was attacked by drowners, and he needs to retrieve something from the cart. Now we get out here and see, well, the actual caravan driver was hit by arrows. But you know, that guy was carrying around a bow. Hmm. Something's wrong here. So let's go back and confront that bastard, because he clearly murdered this dude and wanted his shit. Come on now. And you find the box? Yeah, found your priceless chest. And someone who looks an awful lot like a cart driver with an arrow through his neck. No dryads in these swamps, and never known a drowner or a water hag to use a bow. So lacking any other suspects, I'm guessing. Watch out! Behind you! There's nothing behind me. I'm a witcher, I'd have heard it. Just like I can hear your heart, which is pounding, like a liar's. Best hope you're a better writer than you are a liar. I perceive Geralt to be someone of some measure of morality. I don't know what he's supposed to be in the books. I started to read one, but I'll talk about that later. But I perceive him to be at least a somewhat moral person, and he's not going to, even though I could, just accept payment to help a murderer out. So, gonna chase the bastard down. His horse is too slow. Oh, that must have hurt. Gotta get him out of here. Wake up. See? Can't run from the truth. Not even on horseback. Now who are you, and why'd you attack that cart? Private First Class John Girma. Temerian 6th Division, 2nd Regiment. Disbanded, but still active. Underground, in the woods. That was a medical transport. I'd be damned if it reached the Black Ones. And the medicine. Our lads could use it too. We've many ill among us. You let me go, and they might live and fight once more for a free north. Fine. Go. And may you and your soldier buddies hiding in the bushes be victorious in your struggle against Nilfgaard. You have a vile sense of humor. But you're a decent man. Here, the gold I promised. 
Use it well. Drink to the Silver Lilies, and to Faltes' memory. Freak. There we go. Stumbling into the realm of moral ambiguity. Now, moral ambiguity is something that I think a majority of game developers tend to get way wrong. Now, this is more of a simple example of it. You have a character who, at first, comes across as just like this greedy murderer, but now he has justifications for doing it. Now, you got to consider the possibility that he went and he killed a truly innocent person in order to try and get those medical supplies. But, you know, he's... He's, uh... Potentially fighting for a good cause, provided you believe him. But, you yeah, also think, like, should you really have Geralt involving himself in a war that really has nothing to do with him. And him getting involved in that war isn't really something that happens in this game, really. To an extent, sure, but... The story of the game isn't Geralt getting involved in the war against the Nilfgaardians. So, there's that. I think it's, it's well enough done for a side story. A little side quest here the moral ambiguity part of this. Oh, a warg. Kill it. Kill it now. No, oh, I guess that didn't happen. What's your price? There is a griffin in the area. Slay it. And then I shall see what I can do. Why do you care about this griffin? Because I care about people. The beast has killed ten already. Including a few of my men. 